Hi friends, welcome back to the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory read aloud. Today we're going to get started with chapter 18. Chapter 18, Down the Chocolate River. Off we go, cried Mr. Wonka. Hurry up everybody, follow me to the next room, and please don't worry about Augustus Gloop. He's bound to come out in the wash, they always do. We shall have to make the next part of the journey by boat. Here she comes, look! A steamy mist was rising up now from the great warm chocolate river, and out of the mist there appeared suddenly a most fantastic pink boat. It was a large open rowboat with a tall front and a tall back, like a Viking bolt of old. Like a Viking boat of old. And it was of such a shining, sparkling, glistening pink color that the whole thing looked as though it were made of bright pink glass. There were many oars on either side of it, and as the boat came closer, the watchers on the riverbank could see that the oars were being pulled by masses of Oompa Loompas, at least ten of them to each oar. This is my private yacht, cried Mr. Wonka, beaming with pleasure. I made her by hollowing out an enormous boiled sweet. Isn't she beautiful? See how she comes cutting down the river. The gleaming pink boiled sweet boat glided up to the riverbank. One hundred Oompa Loompas rested on their oars and stared up at the visitors. Then suddenly, for some reason best known to themselves, they all burst into shrieks of laughter. What's so funny? asked Violet Beauregard. Oh, don't worry about them, cried Mr. Wonka. They're always laughing. They think everything's a colossal joke. Jump into the boat, all of you. Come on, hurry up. As soon as everyone was safely in, the Oompa Loompas pushed the boat away from the bank and began to row swiftly downriver. Hey there, Mike TV, shouted Mr. Wonka. Please do not lick the boat with your tongue. It'll only make it sticky. Daddy, said Veruca Salt, I want a boat like this. I want you to buy me a big pink boiled sweet boat exactly like Mr. Wonka's. And I want lots of Oompa Loompas to row me around. And I want a chocolate river. And I want, I want... She wants a good kick in the pants, whispered Grandpa Joe to Charlie. The old man was sitting in the back of the boat, and little Charlie Bucket was right beside him. Charlie was holding tightly onto his grandpa's bony old hand. He was in a whirl of excitement. Everything that he had seen so far, the great chocolate river, the waterfall, the huge sucking pipes, the minty sugar meadows, the Oompa Loompas, the beautiful pink boat, and most of all, Mr. Willy Wonka himself, had been so astonishing that he began to wonder whether there could possibly be any more astonishments left. Where were they going now? What were they going to see? And what in the world was going to happen in the next room? Isn't it marvelous, said Grandpa Joe, grinning at Charlie. Charlie nodded and smiled up at the old man. Suddenly, Mr. Wonka, who was sitting on Charlie's other side, reached down into the bottom of the boat, picked up a large mug, dipped it into the river, filled it with chocolate, and handed it to Charlie. Drink this, he said. It'll do you good. You look starved to death. Then Mr. Wonka filled a second mug and gave it to Grandpa Joe, too. You too, he said. You look like a skeleton. What's the matter? Hasn't there been anything to eat in your house lately? Not much, said Grandpa Joe. Charlie put the mug to his lips, and as the rich, warm, creamy chocolate ran down his throat into his empty tummy, his whole body from head to toe began to tingle with pleasure, and a feeling of intense happiness spread over him. You like it? asked Mr. Wonka. Oh, it's wonderful, Charlie said. The creamiest, loveliest chocolate I've ever tasted, said Grandpa Joe, smacking his lips. That's because it's been mixed by waterfall, Mr. Wonka told him. The boat sped on down the river. The river was getting narrower. There was some kind of dark tunnel ahead, a great round tunnel that looked like an enormous pipe, and the river was running right into the tunnel, and so was the boat. Row on, shouted Mr. Wonka, jumping up and waving his stick in the air, full speed ahead. And with the Oompa Loompas rowing faster than ever, the boat shot into the pitch dark tunnel, and all the passengers screamed with excitement. How can they see where they're going? shrieked Violet Beauregard in the darkness. There's no knowing where they're going, cried Mr. Wonka, hooting with laughter. There's no earthly way of knowing which direction they are going. There's no knowing where they're rowing or which way the river's flowing. Not a speck of light is showing. 
so the danger must be growing, for the rowers keep on rowing, and they're certainly not showing any signs that they are slowing. He's gone off his rocker, shouted one of the fathers, aghast, and the other parents joined in the chorus of frightened, frightened shouting. He's crazy, they shouted. He's barmy. He's nutty. He's screwy. He's batty. He's dippy. He's dotty. He's daffy. He's goofy. He's beany. He's buggy. He's wacky. He's loony. No, he is not, said Grandpa Joe. Switch on the lights, shouted Mr. Wonka. And suddenly, on came the lights, and the whole tunnel was brilliantly lit up, and Charlie could see that they were indeed inside a gigantic pipe and the great upward curving walls of the pipe were pure, white, and spotlessly clean. The river of chocolate was flowing very fast inside the pipe, and the Oompa Loompas were all rowing like mad, and the boat was rocketing along at a furious pace. Mr. Wonka was jumping up and down in the back of the boat and calling to the rowers to row faster and faster still. He seemed to love the sensation of whizzing through a white tunnel in a pink boat on a chocolate river, and he clapped his hands and laughed and kept glancing at his passengers to see if they were enjoying it as much as he. Look, Grandpa, cried Charlie, there's a door in the wall. It was a green door, and it was set into the wall of the tunnel just above the level of the river. As they flashed past it, there was just enough time to read the writing on the door. Storeroom number 54, it said, all the creams, dairy cream, whipped cream, violet cream, coffee cream, pineapple cream, vanilla cream, and hair cream. Hair cream, cried Mike TV. You don't use hair cream. Row on, shouted Mr. Wonka. There's no time to answer silly questions. They streaked past a black door. Store room number 71, it said on it. Whips, all shapes and sizes. Whips, cried Veruca Salt. What on earth do you use whips for? For whipping cream, of course, said Mr. Wonka. How can you whip cream without whips? Whipped cream isn't whipped cream at all unless it's been whipped with whips. Just as poached eggs isn't poached egg unless it's been stolen from the woods in the dead of night. Row on, please. They passed the yellow door on which it said, Storeroom number 77. All the beans. Cocoa beans, coffee beans, jelly beans, and has beans. Has beans, cried Violet Beauregard. You're one yourself, said Mr. Wonka. There's no time for arguing. Press on, press on. But five seconds later, when a bright red door came into sight ahead, he suddenly waved his gold top cane in the air and shouted, Stop the boat! Chapters 19 The Inventing Room Everlasting Gobstoppers and Hair Toffee when Mr. Wonka shouted, Stop the boat! The Oompa Loompas jammed their oars into the river and backed water furiously. The boat stopped. The Oompa Loompas guided the boat alongside the red door. On the door it said, Inventing room, private, keep out. Mr. Wonka took a key from his pocket, leaned over the side of the boat, and put the key in the keyhole. This is the most important room in the entire factory, he said. All my most secret new inventions are cooking and simmering in here. Old Fickle Gruber would give his front teeth to be allowed inside just for three minutes. So would Proud Nose and Slugworth and all the other rotten chocolate makers. But now, listen to me. I want no messing about when you go in. No touching, no meddling, and no tasting. Is that agreed? Yes, yes, the children cried. We won't touch a thing. Up to now, Mr. Wonka said, nobody else... Not even an Oompa Loompa has ever been allowed in here. He opened the door and stepped out of the boat into the room. The four children and their parents all scrambled after him. Don't touch, shouted Mr. Wonka, and don't knock anything over. Charlie Bucket stared around the gigantic room in which he now found himself. The place was like a witch's kitchen. All about him, black metal pots were boiling and bubbling on huge stoves, and kettles were hissing, and pans were sizzling, and strange iron machines were clanking and spluttering, and there were pipes running all over the ceiling and walls, and the whole place was filled with smoke and steam and delicious, rich smells. Mr. Wonka himself had suddenly become even more excited than usual, and anyone could see that this was the room he loved best of all. He was hopping about among the saucepans and the machines like a child among his Christmas presents, not knowing which thing to look at first. He lifted the lid from a huge pot and took a sniff. Then he rushed over and dipped a finger into a barrel of sticky yellow stuff and had a taste. 
Then he skipped across to one of the machines and turned half a dozen knobs this way and that. Then he peered anxiously through the glass door of the gigantic oven, rubbing his hands and cackling with delight at what he saw inside. Then he ran over to another machine, a small tiny affair that kept going put, 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 and every time it went put, a large green marble dropped out of it into a basket on the floor. At least, it looked like a marble. Everlasting gobstoppers, cried Mr. Wonka proudly. They're completely new. I'm inventing them for children who are given very little pocket money. You can put an everlasting gobstopper in your mouth, and you can suck it and suck it and suck it and suck it, and it will never get any smaller. It's like gum, cried Violet Beauregard. It is not like gum, Mr. Wonka said. Gum is for chewing, and if you tried chewing one of these gobstoppers here, you'd break your teeth off, and they never get any smaller. They never disappear. Never. At least I don't think they do. There's one of them being tested this very moment in the testing room next door, and Oompa Loompa is sucking it. He's been sucking it for nearly over a year now without stopping, and it's still just as good as ever. Now over here, Mr. Wonka went on, skipping excitedly across the room to the opposite wall. Over here, I am inventing a completely new line of toffees. He stopped beside a large saucepan. The saucepan was full of a thick, gooey, purplish treacle boiling and bubbling. By standing on his toes, little Charlie could just see inside it. That's hair toffee, cried Mr. Wonka. You eat just one tiny bit of that, and in exactly half an hour, a brand new, luscious, thick, silky, beautiful crop of hair will start growing and out all over the top of your head, and a mustache and a beard. A beard, cried Veruca Salt. Who wants a beard, for heaven's sake? It would suit you very well, said Mr. Wonka, but unfortunately the mixture is not quite right yet. I've got it too strong. It works too well. I tried it on an Oompa Loompa yesterday in the testing room, and immediately a huge black beard started shooting out of his chin, and the beard grew so fast that soon it was trailing all over the floor in a thick, hairy carpet. It was growing faster than we can cut it. In the end, we had to use a lawnmower to keep it in check. But I'll get the mixture right soon, and when I do, then there will be no excuse anymore for little boys and girls going about with bald heads. But Mr. Wonka, said Mike TV, little boys and girls never do go about with... Don't argue, my dear child. Please don't argue, cried Mr. Wonka. It's such a waste of precious time. Now over here, if you will all step this way, I will show you something that I am terrifically proud of. Oh, do be careful. Don't knock anything over. Stand back. Tomorrow, we will continue with chapter 20, The Great Gum Machine.